Welcome to this simple graphic treatment of special relativity, a non-standard way of graphing space-time that can provide insights even for physicists who are already well-versed in relativity theory. Several long-standing problems and seeming paradoxes can be clarified and resolved. How, for example, can two observers in relative motion each measure the other's clock to be moving more slowly than their own? How can they agree on how fast light is moving, even if one of them is moving in the same direction as is the light? And why is the speed of light the ultimate possible speed? Basic geometry and just a single algebraic equation can provide answers to questions like these, and with surprising simplicity, because space and time are accurately represented from a perspective free of pre-relativistic confusions. Hermann Minkowski is credited with recognizing the geometric significance of relativity over a century ago. He conceived a diagram that could show that a fundamental implication of relativity is that space and time are interrelated as a single continuum, meaning four-dimensional space-time. We literally move in time, and unless we are accelerating, we can legitimately regard ourselves as either moving or not moving in space. There is no privileged position or perspective that can say one is definitely moving and another is not. Minkowski's diagram and the supporting mathematics of relativity show that it is important to take the perspective of an observer who is considered not moving in space, in other words, at rest, in order to understand how space and time are interrelated. Most surprisingly, it becomes clear from the space-time diagram that anything in motion relative to our state of rest moves partly in our space and partly in our time. Minkowski's diagram shown here treats our motion in time as perpendicular to space because for the sake of clarity we want to be considered stationary observing others moving in space and so it is represented by a vector a world line in space-time. A world line is defined as a body's combined motion in space and time. The scales of time and space are calibrated as seconds and light seconds. A light second is the distance light moves in a second. Light rays traveling at one light second per second trace diagonals moving toward and away from us and forming what have been called light cones. In the diagram displayed here, I focused on the future light cone, the part above the horizontal line, which represents now. Any relative motion other than that of light, being slower than light, will follow a world line inside the future light cone, as with the object in relative motion shown here. But here's the problem with the Minkowski diagram, and it is nothing less than a scandal that the problem has persisted, uncorrected, for over a hundred years. It is a fundamental principle of relativity, confirmed by every experiment, that clock speed is relative. As we observe things in relative motion, the faster they go, the slower their clocks appear to move. This is what is called time dilation. And as you'll see, strange as it may seem, the clock speed of light is zero. For every second that we move in time, light moves zero seconds but rays of light are mistakenly portrayed in the Minkowski diagram as projections of the observer's clock on the motion of light. Minkowski's projection is a pre-relativistic mistake that has led to serious confusions and misdirections in relativity theory for over a century. Well, the alternative diagram needs a name doesn't it? Here's what makes it different from the Minkowski diagram. The fundamental point is that properly represented, a ray of light with its clock speed of zero should be drawn as moving directly along the space axis of a space-time diagram. That is its physical reality relative to an observer who is at rest moving vertically in time. Motion is relative. Clock speed is relative. So to project a ray of light as moving in time, sharing the observer's clock speed, is to violate a most fundamental principle of relativity. 
By treating relative time instead as an inherent component of the world lines of bodies in relative motion, as is done mathematically with relativity, but not with Minkowski's geometry, there are numerous features of relativity and light that can be discovered, clarified, and explained. In this diagram, light rays are shown moving along the space axis with zero clock speed, while an object with mass, which does move in time, is portrayed as moving at 80% of the speed of light relative to an observer treated as being at rest. As you will see, when time dilation is calculated, at 80% of light speed, the world line of the object is already transgressing the 45 degrees of a supposed light cone with about 53 degrees of divergence from the world line of the observer. It is time now to confront the actually quite simple equation, the Lorentz transformation, which describes the relationship between the clock speeds of bodies in relative motion. The Lorentz transformation is the one equation needed to understand the basic idea of special relativity, and in the following discussion, it will be depicted in diagrams of geometric relationships. The equation actually has two forms, one concerning relative time, one concerning relative space, but we won't be concerned with the space form until later. This example of the equation details how the clock speed of a body traveling at a relative speed of 80% of the speed of light can be calculated. The term TA refers to the clock speed of an observer called A, and the term TB is the clock speed of an observer called B, whose own observation will be ignored for now. If the time elapsed by A is 10 seconds, and B is moving at 80% of C, the speed of light, or in other words, at 0.8 times the speed of light, then by taking the algebraic steps displayed here, the clock of B will be found to tick only 6 seconds relative to A's 10 seconds. Someone familiar with the Lorentz equation might object that V squared should be expressed as V squared over C squared. But by stipulating that v is proportional to the speed of light, that complication is made unnecessary. Someone might also object that t and t prime should be expressed as delta t, for example, which means the change in t. But t is already defined as motion in time, so the delta term is just clutter. Another common practice is to multiply t by c in order to calibrate the time and space axes, but as you'll see, that will be unnecessary. What did our algebra teachers always tell us? Simplify. Here is the Lorentz transformation visualized. In the example of the equation just shown, observer A is considered to be at rest with B in relative motion, moving at 0.8 times the speed of light. Observer A's clock ticks 10 seconds in the time span covered by the diagram, while B moves 8 light seconds in space with a clock ticking just 6 seconds. The correlation of space and time can be seen in the way B's world line moves partly in A's space dimension and only partly in A's time dimension. And note how in contrast to the Minkowski diagram, which projects the clock of the observer onto the object in relative motion, it is the dashed line that represents how far B has moved in A's time frame, thus showing the actual clock speed of B relative to A. There is another noteworthy aspect of the relationship displayed here, which will bear fruit later on. It is a perfect right angle Euclidean triangle formed by the relationship between the space-time vectors of A and B. And because the world line of B forms the hypotenuse of the right triangle formed by B's relative motion in space and relative clock speed, it follows that the world line of B is necessarily equal in length to the world line of A. In principle, therefore, all world lines are equal in length. The same Euclidean relationship holds no matter what the motion of B is relative to A. Here B is moving at point 0.9C and has a relative clock speed of only 4.36 seconds compared to A's 10 seconds. 
And again, it is worth stressing, if only because traditions die hard, that this geometry cannot be represented in the Minkowski diagram, given the distortion created by the projection of an observer's clock on the motion of what is being observed. Three significant insights follow from a consideration of the motion of a light ray in the alternative diagram. Given light's clock speed of zero, with the world line of light traveling along the observer's space axis, and given the equivalence of world lines we've established, it follows that, one, the scale of the time axis is the same as the scale of the space axis. One second of time is equal in length to one light second in space. Two, light will travel as far along the space axis as the observer travels in time, hence the invariant speed of light. And three, nothing can go farther in space in a given period of time than a world line that travels directly along the space axis, hence the limiting maximum speed of light. The seeming absurdity of special relativity has always been the principle that two observers in relative motion will, in the same circumstance, each measure the other's clock to be moving more slowly than their own. A first step in coming to an understanding of how this can be resolved is to recognize that if the world line of observer B is as shown at an angle from A's world line, if B is equally justified in considering herself to be at rest with A in relative motion, then B's orientation to space must be, like A's orientation, perpendicular to her own motion in time. Hence the space axis X prime of B being perpendicular to B's own world line is a skew of the space axis of A. So to get B's perspective of A, as A is observing B, we need only draw B's space axis X prime to a point where a perpendicular can be drawn to A's position in time. The two observations thus mirror each other, and each is equally valid because of their reciprocal orientations in space-time. A rotation of the diagram shows this clearly. From B's perspective, it is A that is moving more slowly in time. One more resolution is appropriate to mention here. How to understand that two observers can agree on a speed of light. How the speed of light can be agreed upon as a constant, even when one observer is moving in the same direction as a light ray. First, we take observer A's perspective and consider B to be moving at point 8C in the same direction as a ray of light, which is emitted at the moment when A and B are adjacent. Observer A reports that the light impinges on some sort of signpost at point PA after traveling 10 light seconds in 10 seconds. Next, we apply the Lorentz transformation for length contraction, the relativistic effect on relative length that corresponds to the effect on relative time. From B's perspective, moving in the same direction as the light ray, the distance to the signpost is 6 seconds, not 10. Accordingly, B's space axis is extended 6 light seconds to the right to point PB, where a perpendicular is drawn to point PA in A's space. Observer B thus reports that the light has terminated at the same physical point in space, but on B's space axis. It must be understood that to overlay two perspectives, two coordinate systems, in this way is problematic as it involves a relationship of observers not just to each other, but also to an external event. Points PA and PB are actually the same physical point in space, and B is actually just six seconds along her world line when the light ray reaches the signpost. Despite the overlay of perspectives, the procedure serves to demonstrate that observer A reports that the light has traveled 10 light seconds in 10 seconds, as B reports that it traveled 6 light seconds in 6 seconds, and that is why the speed of light is a constant. So in summary, 
The alternative to the Minkowski diagram has, by representing observed motion in time as relative, revealed that all bodies in uniform motion will have world lines of equal length, that bodies in relative motion move perpendicular to space in their own coordinate system, has shown how observers in relative motion will each observe the other to be moving more slowly in time, and shown why the speed of light is the absolute limit of speed, and that light speed is constant because the distance light is observed to travel in space varies directly with the distance an observer travels in time. Comments are welcome.